What a turnout. Thank you guys for coming uh, to this press conference to introduce the new Northwestern State head baseball coach. I, it's been a while since we've seen this room this full, which says a lot about the man we'll introduce, or actually uh, our director of athletics, Kevin Boston, will introduce after I get done introducing Kevin. So again, thank you guys for being here. Uh, great to see all these faces, so many familiar ones, so many new ones, uh, a lot of pieces from coaches past and present here today. But uh, you're not here to hear me speak. You never are. And that's okay. So without further ado, the man who has led this department since a little bit more than almost a year and a half now, and uh, he's had his share of these press conferences, and hopefully that stops in, in short order. But uh, without further ado, Northwestern State Director of Athletics, Kevin Boston. I appreciate that, Jason. Um, I want to echo what Jason said about um, – Everybody being here, thank you all, fans, uh, staff, student athletes, uh, university staff uh, for being here. Uh, I know it means a lot to uh, the man we're about to uh, introduce, uh, and it means a lot to our program to have, to have everybody here and, and want to support our program. Um, before we get into talking about uh, the reasons why we did what we did, I want to thank Coach Barbier for his time here at, at Northwestern State. Um, he'll always be a demon. He'll always be a part of the purple and the white. You know, he being here as a student athlete, as a graduate assistant, assistant coach, and, and, and a head coach, uh, he's uh, poured a lot of his heart and soul into this place. And, and I know it was a tough decision for him, um, but uh, I certainly wish him well and good luck at Southeastern other than the three times or four times, depending on if we play him in the tournament when we play him. So uh, good luck to him down in, in, in Hammond. But I uh, but wanted to say uh, thank you for, for your service and, and time to Northwestern. And now I'd like to talk to Coach's family, uh, welcome them. Obviously, you've been here for, for, for seven years now, but obviously in, in this role, uh, welcome you in this role, Lori, uh, Rayleigh, Callan. Um, I know you all are excited for, uh, for your dad and, and, and husband and uh, look forward to um, working with him as we get started on this journey together. As you all know, this process was pretty quick. Um, you know, when I first got to start talking to Bobby about uh, the possibility of this, this happening, um, you know, you're always thinking about what you may do in these situations. You know, for every sport that we have, I've, I've got a list and that type of thing. And, and for us, it, it, was, it was a natural fit to, to, to elevate and promote uh, Coach Bertrand. You know, he's been Bobby's right-hand man for seven years. Um, he's been an integral part of this community. Knows all the donors, knows all, um, all the you know, kids growing up, playing ball and, and stuff in, in here. And, and, um, and for a program that has to be able to fundraise, um, he is a natural fit that way. Then you add to the, f the fact that he's been a head coach at UT Tyler um, and been very successful as a head coach. He brings everything that we, I ought to be looking for in a head coach. And so it was, it was easy. So I talked to Dr. Jones. I said, Dr. Jones, this is a possibility. Uh, Coach Bertrand, I mean, Coach Barbier may be leaving. I said, I want to do this if this happens. And he was, he spot on said, I, I agree. This is the right move. So it was, uh, it was short and sweet. And uh, when Coach Barbier informed me uh, uh, yesterday officially that he had accepted the job, um, we obviously offered the job to Coach Bertrand, and, and, and he, he accepted. So without, without further ado, um, I just want to introduce our 13th head coach, of the head of the baseball program here at Northwestern State, Coach Christopher Bertrand. Wow, man. Um, listen, if I can steal a line from my great new buddy, Rick Cabrera, what a day to be a demon, right? What a day to be a demon. Listen, I have to tell you, just seeing it look like this, I'm, I'm humbled and I'm flattered by this turnout. And you have to know what an honor it is for me to be chosen as the leader of this baseball program. It, it's one of the greatest honors of my career. It's not lost on me, the men that have sat in that chair. It's not lost on me. 
Um, and, and to even think about carrying that legacy on is something that I don't take lightly. Um, and it's something that, that truly brings you to an emotional place to know how many people care about the demons um, and, and to know what a great legacy we have. I, I, I don't view myself as anything other than a steward, and I hope to be a great one at that. If you'll indulge me for a second, I have to tell you, for anybody in this room who needs to hear it, or for anybody out there that, that needs to hear it, dreams come true. Dreams come true. The, the idea of hard work and, and putting your head down and being patient, the dreams come true. And I, I'll tell you a story real quick, but I've, I've wanted to do this, and I've looked forward to a moment like this and an opportunity like this for as long as I can remember. When I was a kid growing up in South Louisiana, the cool fundraiser at schools was a magazine drive, if anybody can remember that. And one year, my older brother convinced my grandpa to buy us a Sports Illustrated subscription. And every month, that magazine comes to your house. And the favorite sets of those magazines of mine were when they would do previews of all the major sports seasons that were coming up. And so they would do one for the NBA, and they would do one for the NFL, and they would do one for Major League Baseball. And I can very vividly remember I would study the magazine cover to cover, and I would go back and I would flip the pages, and I would look at the logo of the team, and I would try to guess who the head coach was. I tried to memorize every head coach of every major sports team across those sports. And, and I remember that moment so much. It, it, I was fascinated with coaching, and I was fascinated with leadership, and I was fascinated for, for the business of sport. And, and to see it come true in, in a way with this opportunity, you, you have to know that dreams come true. And again, that idea is not lost on me. I want to thank Dr. Jones, and I want to thank Kevin um, for just, again, that tremendous opportunity, right? The opportunity to lead your demons. It, it, it is truly one of the greatest honors because we're going to use words like our, and we're going to use words like we, and we're going to use words like us. Because the program belongs to you. The program belongs to the people that made it happen. The program belongs to the players and the players that make it happen, right? And we're going to build this thing as a family, and we're going to build it the right way. And it's something that, again, the, the honor of being able to be the leader and the steward of your program is something that I can never thank Kevin and Dr. Jones enough for. I want to reiterate in thanking Bobby. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. And I know that we've all run through a bunch of emotions in the last couple of days. But without Bobby, this doesn't take place. You know, seven years ago when Bobby gave me an opportunity, it wasn't the first time I tried to get into Division I baseball. But Bobby gave me an opportunity, right? He gave me an opportunity, and Bobby trusted me. And he trusted me to be able to give me some things that I felt like we built the program together in, in the right reason or for the right reasons and in the right way. But without Bobby, this moment doesn't take place because he did it seven years ago and he trusted and he, and, and he built something that now we all get to enjoy. And so when we overcome that emotional part of it, he deserves a great amount of thanks and I am forever indebted for what he did for my family seven years ago and for the role that he played in allowing this to happen. My college coach is here today. Mike... <laughs> Played, I played for Mike Burns all those years ago, and I have to tell you this, and, and it's why it's important to bring it up, but I told Coach this when I finished. Coach rescued my life in the game of baseball. The, the, the last year of my junior college experience as a player was not one that was of the greatest. And when Coach gave me an opportunity, but more importantly, when he coached me the way that he did, it, it, it saved my life in the game of baseball. When I was done playing, I wrote him a letter to try to express my feelings. And in that letter, I told him something that holds true to this day. And I told him, I said, you know, coach, like every baseball coach, we, we don't know everything there is to know about baseball. And like every one of us, we don't know everything there is to know about life. But that man knows the most about putting the two of them together. And he taught it to me. And you're going to see the footprints and the fingerprints of that all over this baseball program. And I want to make him proud in the way 
that I can try to lead this thing. But I appreciate him being there, and, and his impact on me made this moment happen. It truly did. I want to say something to my family in, in a way, too. If you know anything about the Bertrands, right? And so, look, I am number four of six children, and these two beautiful children are grandchild number nine and grandchild number 11 for my parents. They also raised two great-grandchildren, right? But the role that my parents and the role that my brothers and sisters have played in my life, both personally and from a baseball standpoint, you're going to see those fingerprints all over this baseball program too. When I was a kid, I can remember my brothers and sisters where, where vacations were our baseball tournaments, and that's a sacrifice. I can remember my brothers and sisters and, and girlfriends and boyfriends and people that, that we called family sleeping on the floor of hotel rooms so that I could play baseball, that I could play baseball as a youngster that would eventually lead to a career. It's not lost on me the sacrifices that my brothers and sisters made to make this moment happen. It's not lost on me what my parents have done for me. My father's my hero. My father's my hero. And you're going to see his fingerprints all over it, too, not because it has anything to do with coaching or anything to do with the game. But the man raised six children, and he didn't miss a thing. The man raised six children, and all of them got a Catholic education, and we wanted for nothing. And he did it in a way where he showed you what it meant to stand by someone on an altar. And he did it in a way that showed you how to be a professional in the community. He, he did it in a way that left a lasting imprint on me, on, on how to live a life, right? And I'm fortunate for what he did for me, and I'm fortunate, more importantly, that I get a chance to live a life showing those life lessons while being able to do it through the great game that we play. You can't go on without saying something about these people, but listen, I don't know what I did to deserve this woman, but... Man, I, I, I can't begin to tell you. All the woman knows how to do is love. And she loves me unconditionally, and that's a really hard thing to do, man. That's a really hard thing to do. But listen, you can't be successful in this business without a, a, a really supportive and, and a really sacrificing person by your side. And the good Lord gave me the best one that there is. I, like, I really like music, and, and I take a lot of inspiration, and I take a lot of ideas from, from musical lyrics. Lori and I like Texas country music, and there's a Texas country uh, artist, and his name's Cody Johnson. He, he sings a song called, um, With You I Am, right? And my favorite line in that song that describes our relationship perfectly, he says, I'm the same old boy, but a whole lot better whenever you're holding my hand. And that's exactly the way that I feel about her because you're going to see her around the baseball program because she's going to love 40 people. She's going to love 40 people, and she's going to call them her sons. And I can tell you that our players are going to grow to, to think of my parents as grandparents, right? We're going to do this as a family, and we're going to do it in the vein of family values. And I was taught by the best, and I was given the best, right? The kids make sacrifices every day so that I can get to do this too. These are two really, really special ones. They have their own interests and they have their own passions. But you see, when you get to graze kids like that, you, you get to see, right? Like I admire Rayleigh's courage in everything that she does. I admire her independence. I, I admire the way she goes about doing things, right? She's, she's 11 going on 39, but I admire so much about what she does. Uh, I admire Callan's energy. I really do. I, I admire his energy. I admire his passions, right? Callan has 800 passions in life, but he attacks every single one of them, man. And there's things to be learned from the gifts that the Lord gave me, and those three are definitely among the best gifts. I, I want to turn it back to the people. I really do. I see Dougie there, and, and I see Jason here. I'm glad y'all are both here. I, I, let's, let's think about something. But I'd like to say I'm probably the first demon baseball assistant coach to be promoted to head coach without ever having been fired by Coach Black. Can I make that claim? <laughs> Can I make that claim right there? There you go. I see that's a joke, and albeit maybe a bad one, but that's an appropriate place to start. That's an appropriate place to start because this baseball program 
is about the people. The job requires it. Success requires it. This job is about the people, and it's more than the game. And that's why I, I really chose to do it, is because the people in this room have made an impact on me, and I want to continue to try to make an impact on you. I want to coach this baseball team, and I want to coach them well, and I hope that fun things come out of it. But you have to know, like, there's nothing better than a Bill Rutledge bear hug, knowing what the friendship is. There, there's nothing better than walking into Mr. Bill Townsend's office and having a conversation, and he makes you feel like you're the only person in the world in the moment. Like, there's nothing better than hearing a Carrie Beth idea and the attention to detail that comes from just a simple idea, right? When I walk into Exchange Bank and I get a firm handshake from Mike Newton and we have a conversation about life, that's what I love about Demon Baseball, is that it affords me the opportunity to do those things and then those people get to make an impact on our program and our program gets to make an impact on them. This program belongs to you. I'm, I'm not ever going to refer to it as mine. I'm a leader and I'm a steward and I'm honored by that opportunity. But the program belongs to you and we're going to do right by you, right? We're going to do right by you. The program's going to reflect what it is we all believe in. This is a town and a community of hard work. This is a town and a community of relationships. This is a town and a community that expresses its family values by the way it goes about daily life. And our baseball program will do the exact same thing. That's what we want to do. We, we want to live a life based on family values that, that makes you proud, right? And I'm going to do everything I can. We're going to work hard. We're going to work smart. We're going to work tough. I believe toughness wins. I really do. I believe that toughness wins, and we're going to try to the best of our ability to grow tough young men, and we're going to play a tough brand of baseball. We really will. It's going to be a reflection of the people, and it's going to be a reflection of the community. Once again, listen, I'm, I'm truly honored, and I'm truly humbled, and we can't promise a bunch of the things that we can't control, but I can control this, and I'll tell you, I'm going to pour everything I've got into this every single day. Forkham Demons. We're going to open it up to a couple of questions. I'm sorry we didn't think of a second wireless mic. That's on me. So we're tightly knit, so you can be a little loud. Uh, we'll bring Coach up. Once we get done with this, uh, Lori and the kids come up. We'll get a couple of photos. Uh, we'll do individuals with the media. You can get him one-on-one -on -one after we move the table. And then everyone's free to welcome Coach Bertrand officially uh, to the head coaching position. So we'll open it up for questions for a couple of minutes. Uh, anyone's free to ask anything they want. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, seems to be, it seems to be all the buzz, right? Not the best day in the world for the Demons yesterday, you know. Um, but that's okay. Look, we, we're, we're going to meet the challenges head on, right? Like that's a part of it, right? Good, bad, right, wrong, or indifferent, my feelings about it, my opinions about it, it's real, right? And it's happening, and it's going to affect the trajectory of the baseball program. It, it's not our job to run from it. It's not our job to be scared of it, right? And so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to attack it with everything that we have. I, I think that if if you like the things that we're going to be about, if you like the things that are said, then those are the things that we can sell. And I believe we can sell that, right? And so whether it be transfer portal guys, whether it be junior college guys, whether it be um, the guys in, in the, the high school recruiting classes, right? I think that we have a product that we can sell. And I think that anytime your roster has needs, you, you got to go get it done, right? And so, I mean, Portal specifically, yeah, we're, we're going to attack it, right? I don't know how successful we're going to be or exactly what that's going to look like, but we're going to attack it, right? We're going to find some baseball players that, that want to do things the way we want to do them. We're going to find those tough baseball players, right? We're going to find some guys that believe in our culture. And so no matter what age they are and no matter where they come from, um, we're going to attack the roster stuff that we have to fill with, with the best that we have, right? How does your style 
for a baseball differ from what we've been doing for the last several years if it does not? Uh, yes, st stylistically, um, I'd like to tell you, like one of the things that I, I really believe in, um, which, which you may see a little bit of a difference in, I, I don't know that I consider baseball style um, to, to put yourself into one box, right, or to put yourself into kind of just a certain thing. What I believe, man, is that we have to go get a, a little bit of a better athlete, right? We, we, we've got to get a little bit faster. Um, we've got to get some things and some tools that we think that we need. And I think that what you do is you build the best baseball team that you can from a personnel standpoint, and then you play the brand of baseball that best suits that personnel. And so I think that there are schools of thought in which you play or coach a style of baseball, and you go get players that play within that style. I think the difference that you may see is that I think we're going to build the best roster that we can build, and then I'm going to play the best brand of baseball that fits the skills of that roster. And that may look different in different years, and that may look different on different nights. But I really believe that, that a balanced attack, right? And so a balanced attack in three phases of the game. And so if that's pitching and defense and offense, a balanced attack in the three phases. And within each of those phases, something that is, again, reflective of balanced, we need some right-handed arms. We need some left-handed arms, right? We need to learn how to bunt a little bit. We need to steal some bags. We need to continue to hit the baseball hard, you know? We need to play solid defense, right? So all those things. I think that you're going to see an attempt at getting more balanced, and I think that you're going to see an attempt in which we're going to play the style that is reflective of the skills of the personnel. Awesome. Right, right. And, and not because there's a direct carryover that you can see, but when you build a, a roster in a Division three environment with no scholarships, you learn how to put a competitive roster together with no scholarships, right? The time at LSUS where we built that program, you know, from the ground up, right? Proud of what we built. Not an ego thing, but proud of what we built. Um, but when you work on sprinkler heads and you clean bathrooms and you do those things, right? Hey, man, throw some challenges at me. Right? You want to throw a budget at me? That's okay. I'm going to meet it head on. Right? You want to throw a broken sprinkler head at me? Go ahead. I'm going to meet it head on. Right? Me and Bill Rutledge are going to meet that thing head on. Right? <laughs> Heck yeah, we will. Right? And so I think what it does is it, it says, hey, I, you know, if we need to be creative in roster construction, let's do it. Right? If we need to continue on the trajectory of fundraising that is necessary, let's do it. Right? The things that present themselves, I feel like my career in those two places and the people that I've learned from, I feel like what it does, Doug, is it says, um, hey, man, throw, throw a problem at me and I'm going to troubleshoot it, right? Well, I'm glad I don't have to get to know you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank uh, you. What about the rest of the staff? That's in, in progress right now, right? In progress right now. And so what we have done is we have made sure to shore up Dan Halad's going to be our pitching coach. And I thought that that was of the utmost importance to take care of the pitching staff. You know, we, we've spent the last seven years and our success has been largely based upon the way in which we throw the baseball. And so I thought in the same vein that Kevin mentioned continuity among this decision, I thought it was a wise decision to maintain continuity among the pitching staff, right? So we've hired Dan. Everybody else is going to be given an opportunity to stay, and we're going to do the best possible thing that we can to make sure that we carve out roles for them, right? I've made at least that commitment, is that you, you, you have a place, you have a place within the family, and we're going to have to discuss what that looks like and whether or not we can actually make that happen. But those things are ongoing right now. Both of our assistant coaches are currently on the road recruiting today. That's why you don't see them in the room. But we've hit the ground running, right? And so those guys are out on the road. They're working hard. Um, and we've had some conversations. And we'll have more conversations. But I'm working on that right now. Once again, we want to thank everybody for coming. And like I said, again, what a, what a great turnout for somebody who's got some large shoes to fill. But like he said, bring it on. So thank you, guys. We'll get the media up here. Uh, Chris, we'll get the, the family ready for some photos. And then uh, next 10, 15 minutes, he's all yours. Thank you for coming again.